rolling, and... Hi. Has anybody here taken a scuba diving lesson? My brother, my brother. Okay, where they teach you to plan your dive and yeah. dive your plan. There was a lot of planning in this video. Pre-production included getting permission from the teacher, from the school, from uh, other students. Setting a timeline, start date, end date with milestones, project, project planning, yeah, resources, budgets, what equipment did I need, um, people, yeah, bodies, arms and legs. Oh, and storyboarding. I did storyboarding to plan my shot. What did I want to say with this video? What did I want to say with this video? I had to keep coming back to that over and over again because I'd go through all of this and I'd say, oh, I want to rearrange my storyboard. And I'd do storyboard, storyboard, storyboard over and over again. Now, the video is about learning. The best way I learn is by doing not by lecture methods. When, <laughs> when I was nine years old, I mean in third grade, my teacher and the principal of the school tried to tell my parents that I was mentally retarded. <coughs> Fortunately, my mother went to Chicago Normal College to um, learn how to be a teacher. She was well acquainted with mental retardation and she said, Carol, you are not mentally retarded. You're not a slow learner. She also said, when you get with the right teachers, you're going to love learning. I thought my mother was crazy, but she was right. I had a goal of becoming a fashion designer. As a little girl, I would draw pictures. Uh, of, of anything and everything, but I really was into fashion design for men and for women. This is, I did this man's hat using washes and pen and inks. This was, I was about 18 years old, and I used ink and pen tips, lots of pen tips. And somebody asked me, I think it was Carol in one of the meetups, what do you mean by studio art? And I said, it's brushes, paint brushes, big brushes, medium sized brushes, little brushes where I could get that fine line on the edge. And this, <laughs> over, over a decade spent with this palette mixing paints in combination to get just the right colors. One of my assignments was um, to capture nature. I did this egret with tempera. And I liked working with tempera because I could add water to it. I couldn't add water to acrylic or oils. Uh, another assignment was charcoals. I liked working with charcoals, and these were erasers, and pencils, and a knife sharpener, and lots of leads for my pencils. So I did a charcoal. I loved working with black and white. There was no fashion design school in South Florida where I grew up. So I took a lot of art classes. I took whatever I could in uh, working with fabrics. I could make a pattern for any size or shape using any textile. I, I learned how to make patterns from a Cuban lady. And so I got really good at it. I made a lot of clothes. But again, there was no career potential. So what does a girl do when the career of her choice doesn't open up? She goes back to school. 
I went to the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and I studied geology for a year and a half, but I made straight D's. Wow. The, t the professor would say, I don't have time for questions in class. Go talk to my graduate students. They'll help you with your homework. Those graduate students were already hired by oil companies before they graduated. I was a woman in an all-male field. I didn't stand a chance. So after a year and a half of making D's, I withdrew from the university. What does a girl do when she withdraws from the university? I went to work in a boat yard, and I loved it. On the Chesapeake Bay, it was a sailor's paradise. You know, the land goes like this. Uh, it was a solitary job, I, and, and Frank Hogg took me under his arm, under his wing, and taught me how to sand and varnish teak, the tow rails on sailboats, and the teak decks, and the handrails, and the tow rails on these magnificent sailboats. On one side was the Chesapeake Bay, and on another side were egrets, and Canadian geese, and swallows. Uh, I loved it. But it was really, really hard, backbreaking work, working in a boat yard. So what does a girl do when she quits that job? She goes back to school. <laughs> I went to a, a co four-year college that was associated with my church. I knew its reputation, and I knew the alumni, and I knew some of the teachers. So I knew what I was getting into. The deal was that the teachers graded us by our participation in class. We were assigned projects to work as a group on projects, or we had our own projects to present like we're doing here. This was terrifying for me because I was 31 years old and I hadn't learned to talk to people. But the teachers set up some ground rules, no laughing at each other, no bullying, help each other, help each other on each other's project, if you were involved or not, support each other. And with those ground rules, it made it safe for us students to overcome our fears. And I took that opportunity to overcome my fear of expressing my ideas, uh, of talking to people, Doing homework was a joy for me, so that wasn't a problem. It was talking to people. And I floundered around a lot. I hurt some people's feelings in the process, but I learned how to talk and get out there and, and just be with people. And I not only did well, I excelled in that four-year college. Um, I got a degree, but... Um, it didn't lead to the career prospects that I really wanted. <laughs> the writing and the research that I learned in college transferred over into the career that I eventually wound up in, and that was technical writing. I wrote user guides on how to set up projectors and how to use the remote, how to, how to set up big HD TVs to routers and to VCRs and Xboxes and what have you. Um, all I cared about were the ports. I didn't care about some state-of-the-art picture that marketing presented for ad advertising and data sheets. I wanted, to know the, I wanted to know the ports. And that's what I photographed. So I could show customers in my user guide how to connect to the peripherals. Connect this cable to this port. But I did that in Illustrator and Photoshop using the pen tool, and then I, I, I got good at Bezier curves. And then I deselect the, uh, so select the inverse and delete the background, and then add a drop shadow. But there's not much creativity in that. <coughs> So what did I, what, and then I was, in, uh, I, I was employed at ViewSonic for 12 years doing that. The what? Uh, I was a technical writer at ViewSonic for 12 years. 
ViewSonic as a company in uh, Walnut. I loved it. It was working with really, really good people who happen to be good at what they do. It made me want to be a better person and a better worker. And we, we worked really hard to meet corporate deadlines. But I loved it. Eventually, my job, my whole department, was outsourced to Taiwan. We were brought into a conference room, and the uh, department head said, ladies and gentlemen, this is your last day. This department is now being outsourced to Taiwan. That included the engineers I worked with, the technicians, specialists, and me, the Lone Ranger technical writer. So what does a girl do when <laughs> her job is outsourced to Taiwan? She goes back to school, and here I am. I've taken seven classes at SCC, HTML, CSS, web design, InDesign, Photoshop, Premiere, and all the teachers encourage you to participate in class. I don't need a degree. I have a bachelor's degree, thank you very much. Um, I sacrificed a great deal to go to that four-year Christian college, and I loved it. There's a lot of us who would have stayed on campus to keep to do it again, but they they told us you're, you're, you've got your degree, go. <laughs> but there's a lot of us alumni who love that college so much, so that that the learning didn't stop, the love of learning. See, my mother was right. When you get with the right teachers, you will love learning. And what are we paying for this class? Anyway, it's harder to teach that way. Uh, it's harder to teach getting the students involved in learning as opposed to lecture methods of teaching. It's worth it to me as a student to get feedback from my teacher about how I did the assignment. I, I did an assignment in one of my other classes and immediately I got feedback from the other students Thank you very much. And from my teacher, I did uh, panning exercises in my digital photography class. And immediately, I got feedback from the teacher that just, of course, why didn't I think of that? That is worth it for me to show up to class, to make the effort to do the assignment. Get this, I don't need the degree. I need the experience. Now, in conclusion, I have to tell you, I have to confess that Making a video uh, was, uh, pressing that little red button to get video was very, very hard for me. I had an attitude. It reminded me of the years when I, had, I ran my own business for three years, videotaping people telling their life stories. But it was not a money-making proposition. I depleted my savings account and lived on credit cards. And after three years, my CPA, le CPA leaned over the table and said, Carol, are you philosophically opposed to declaring bankruptcy? <laughs> and I said, yes, I am. I won't do it. I'll, I'll get a job. So I sold all my video equipment. But pressing that little red button on this camera, I had a mental block. Uh, hopefully, I recognize that now. And now I can go forward and, and make more videos. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's about learning by doing. I captured some students in my other classes doing their subject, learning, doing, doing it in class. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.